favor. I feel like there's a lot of skill expression on the Aphelios. I feel like Jinx is just ba brainless and broken, right? You stand back <laughs> with your rockets and you fire ah, them the, away. The BB-80 carry, <laughs> yeah. brainless and broken. A hundred percent. But we do see OMG, they recognize the strength this Ari had. Remember, Ari, a hundred percent win rate in the series. Mm -hmm. uh, we saw do we have an excellent game, game one, and then Cream as well. I feel like more agency. Yeah, after Cold, I think he was probably second place in terms of MVP. He had a really strong performance, so they will lock that in. Now, I feel like you probably just take the Aphelios here if you are going down that direction. We have seen teams move a little bit differently. We've seen things like uh, the Zaya come out, other areas. They're going to lock in the Viego. They have that reset combo. But now they're kind of pigeonholed a bit. You kind of need to take your AD carry on three, which means you can't necessarily respond to what LNG take. But... They don't really do anything that wild. They take predicted mid-jungle. It could obviously be a support karma, but based on how LNG play, we expect that. And now I expect OMG will probably take the AD carry unless they have some fringe stuff that they don't think will get banned. We do see the Samira being hovered. I would be hyped, but there's a lot of options available right now. Yeah, there's so many things they can go with here. There's so many ways they can build this one around. I will say for Abel, he did have this matchup yesterday. He does seem to favor the Ezreal going into this. It does open up your support. It's not as, you know, cut and dry of you have to pick engage. You have to pick. You can be a little bit more, say, choice, have a little bit more choice with your support pickle, but Abel win that game yesterday against LWX. Kind of ended up in a really bad hole. Four or two thousand gold. Sorry, four three thousand gold behind at like fifteen minutes, and it just was not a good time. The Jinx is always going to win that. Yes, the Ezreal has a lot of versatility and diversity in his build, but you need to make sure that you're not falling behind because the Jinx is just straight up better. You'll get outskilled so hard, right? And I love that they're banning the Tom Kench because in terms of having that single target uh, kill potential. The Tom Kench can deny that so heavily. Rakan comes out, uh, banning that away from my one. You had a spectacular game one. And we do see both Shanji and Cold being targeted what they had in game two and were so successful on, but it came down to locking down that critical target. And that's vital because we have a Jinx who's going to scale exceptionally, right? And we have a Karma who can buff her up. It does mean that you need to answer this problem that will be light on Jinx later in the game. They're in a position now where there's any supports they want to blind, they can take it here, or they could just end up picking the top laner. It's a delicate situation. I like this. I like this from a, from a point of view of like Cold is looking so good when he's on hard engaged supports. Maybe not specifically the set, but definitely something along those lines. It can be a lot distorted. Plus, it does give Shanji the counter pick and the Trindamir isn't banned. So he could end up getting a favorable matchup. The only thing I'm concerned about is that sometimes the set has difficulty closing gaps, right, without flash. If you don't close a gap on LNG, you will just get absolutely dismantled. I also think like you want to play aggressive with set lanes on the bot side. Ezreal's not the best at sort of facilitating that. Ezreal's better at playing with things like Karma and having the poke lane, which is why it's particularly came painful that they can't go Ezreal Karma here because the Karma's been taken by LNG. Now we will see uh, the Camille come out for Arlo, something that he had a uh, pretty decent performance on in that game too, despite the fact they lost. I think he, he sort of handled that one okay. He did get solo killed by Shanji, but still was relevant in fights. And then looking towards the Nautilus in that support role, that single target lockdown, it, you know, the fact is point and click, very good against Ari, very, very good against Ezreal. And now for OMG, are they going to commit to something like the Trinomir? Are they going to go for a strong counter pick for Shanji? They have a lot of options in this situation. We could even see something fringe like the Rumble come out. Uh, but they might end up school. just looking towards the Renekton. We'll see what they want to go for. So OMG do have their final pick. They are going to lock it. I like this. I yeah. think you go with comfort. You go with saying, look, we know that Shanji is a momentum-based player. We need to give him give him, give him, him a much more favorable matchup. And this has been banned away from them all series. So this is something that you need to prove to RNG tomorrow that this needs to be a consistent ban on your blue side or red side. Doesn't matter what side you're on. Yeah, and the thing with the Trinomir is, I mean, this is how most matchups can go. If you get ahead, you can just steamroll a matchup, yep. right? Uh, it becomes kind of unplayable for the Camille if you fall behind and he's diving you. But also when it comes to those team fights, it's going to be so much emphasis is on light once again, but you're not playing Zeri. Yep. You don't have a dash. You don't have infinite stacking movement speed. Uh, you still have that protection for the Karma, but ultimately it's one of these situations where if they're sort of aggressing for multiple sides, you have the Trinomir flanking, the Ari charging at you, the Viego... The goal is kill light in most of these team fights, and if they succeed Has been on all that, series. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if they succeed on that, definitely the opportunity to take over. I, I do still have concerns. I'm not super sold on the bot lane for OMG, but they have that strong mid jungle again that spikes at six. They have the Trinomir at top, and it kind of feels like based on how they've set this up, bot lane they might just leave a little bit isolated, and they're going to play towards potentially getting the Trinomir ahead. My concern is we'll we look see. at the game yesterday, right? Yeah. FPX against OMG. 
they ha they got really brutalized. In the games they lost there, it was FPX snowballing LWX through the bot lane. That could happen again here. Yeah. I remember set stakes, game three. They lose this, they don't make playoffs. It's, it's that simple. Yeah, that's basically how it goes. We can't make it any more simple than that. You win today, you still got to win tomorrow, but at least there's still a chance. There is still hope in your final series. It gives you a lot of momentum as well. Considering. Hope Oh, yeah, no, he's on the JDG. I'm so sorry. I, you know, it's again, I hate to pick better names. Uh, it's like Able. It's just like Able is Able. It's like, God damn it, of course Able is, is Able. Is Able able to carry? I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. On um, the Ezreal, I don't know. Yeah. I've seen Ezreal's take over. I've seen Ezreal's do almost literally nothing. It's very much a feast or famine with this guy sometimes, depending on how the laning phase goes. But that is neither here nor there. We are jumping onto the rip for the third and final time today. OMG, with got themselves, and we're not jumping onto the riff, we're coming back to us. We were doing a little dance and everything. Yeah, I was getting hyped. Yeah, up. we were even like, up. Yeah, <laughs> but I can't really move that much because yeah, the camera will so start shaking. You can even just, see that. Yeah, we can it's literally see it right now. We do apologize for the camera shake. This is my home setup. I'm not, it's not used to having two people. Yeah, I broke in. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm new lyric, uh, hysterics broke in. Yeah. Dagda and Muncha thinking really about it. You should get the window fixed. I don't know, honestly. man. I like the breeze. We've had a pretty big heat wave coming to Ireland recently. It is, it is. 16 degrees. Six, I find that hilarious because there's going to be people listening. <laughs> That's right? not hot at all. There's going to be people listening who are like, oh, it, you know, it's kind of cool today. It's like 25 degrees yeah. and they'll hear us. But here's here's Ireland and, and Newcastle just being like, breeds. lads, mid-teens, let's yeah, go. Uh, like, it's so, such, a nice, such a nice temperature for me, especially when you get that nice breeze coming in from the Especially because Serex, obviously from Australia, right? Yeah. And the other and, night, and Jordan's from the desert. <laughs> yeah, like I was, I was walking around in the t-shirt, and it was. I mean, I thought it was fine. Yeah. My, I was, I was in like harem pants. Yeah, minorly, br <laughs> minorly brisk, and then they were literally just like, oh. So cold. Yeah. Like hysterics brought his like fluffy, like very much like I'm going hiking in the winter jumper or jacket with him. But it's neither here nor there. It's warm if you're from the northeast or northwest of uh, of Europe, uh, as we have a nice little heat wave hitting us here. But LNG versus OMG, we are coming into the third game of this series. It is a 1-1, and the big thing that we saw in both of those games that whoever got the early momentum got control of the Dragons, and those Dragons turned out to be pivotal. Yes, and often winning early does tend to favor you winning late, uh, unsurprisingly. And I feel like the big thing is we've seen a lot of agency in that mid lane, right? Consistently in this series, and since we came back from Chinese New Year, honestly, 12.4, we started to see, instead of teams playing things like uh, Victor and Corky playing just to scale to ramp up, Mid prio contesting that, using that to, to spread your presence across the map has been so important. And here, once again, it's this Karma Ari matchup. We saw this in the previous game. Karma is going to have more power early. Lee Sin is also a jungler who spikes very hard at level three. Yes, his ult is a big tool, but I am looking at Tarzan and Doyenby. If they can start impacting the map at level three, they can really take over. Oh. On the other side, I'm looking at the level six. The night went down. There's a lot of damage onto Iwan. The cold will get traded back into it though, but summoner advantage now to LNG, and that's a big thing in this bot side. And critically, Set has built in sustain, right? He gets that extra regen when he's low, so it's not big of a deal if you end up trading heavily like that now. Kanji hoping for maybe a couple more crits there. <laughs> that is literally... That was unfortunate. Yeah, that's just how it goes. <laughs> Full rage bar, and it's like, yeah, three autos, not a single crit. It's like, damn it. <laughs> well, that's how that's how the matchup goes. It is sometimes a little bit of RNG for the Trindomir in these early stages. If you get one or two quote-unquote lucky crits, it can swing the momentum of that yeah, one. Yeah, not as bad if anyone remembers when there used to be this 1% crit rune. Uh, and there were times where you'd literally lose lane because someone would just literally 1%. So... For anyone who's not familiar, it used to be you had these room pages alongside masteries, and you could choose what went into them, right? And you could just put one crit rune, you had 1% chance, and you would just crit once in lane, maybe once in like... <laughs> Five, what? six auto once attacks. Like, but once in like 50 games, it'd be useful. Oh, here we go. Level three, though, for Tarzan. He tries to go in. Will land the Sonic Wave. He goes back. But the spin to win means Ashanji should keep himself alive. Did have to burn the Ghost, though, to create that little bit of extra distance. Yeah, you want to invest the Ghost early because uh, just, just to make sure that movement speed is able to get you out rather than coming in late and then uh, end up getting caught. It's obviously bid. It's not a huge deal. It does also get chunked out a little bit. but it's like a three-minute cooldown. Yeah, it's not whatever. That much. Not huge, but I like to see Tarzan try to impact the map early. And that's the goal, right? You're playing Lee Sin. You're going to have prior mid thanks to Doom B on this Karma. You're a really strong level 3 in jungle. I want to see presence on the map. Try and impact top. Try and impact bot. Potentially punish mid. There's so many options here. But LNG are the ones who want to have the emphasis early. 
now. Oh, the hook shot has been committed here. The Sanji Trindamir has been doing pretty well so far, just pushing back the Camille. We will see Aki slowly rotating himself around. They're trying to see if they can get that wave to crash, and if they can, a dive might be in order, but you do have the teleport available here for the Karma. Again, the way the teleports work now is that pre-14 minutes, you can only teleport to your allied turrets, and that's, I don't know why my accent went on that way, but it did. We're gonna see the hook shot come in, the flash, as we see now, Ali uh, trying to make something work here, but no flash available to him. Will he get stunned up? He will not, but he'll be slowed down. Aki cannot tank up the tower anymore, and it's a little bit of a scuff move as Tarzan comes running up. Shanji needs to get himself the hell out of Dodge. There is a hook shot for Ala as he tries to make something work. There's the flash in, and they're gonna trade it back. No, he's not. Not able to do it as we go straight back down towards this bottom side. There's the Haymaker to try to trade back this shield. But the set is losing out on these trades pretty damn heavily. Just messy there though from OMG and super substantial, right? Because you get the trade kill back. That gives all a bit of an advantage. He's going to be able to push this wave. And remember, it's no TP from Shanji. So although he is going to be able to get there in time to catch this because of the cannon minion, he's still not going to be able to TP in to deny the crash. Now, we see this coming out here. Shanji's trying to crash the wave in and trying to trade heavily with Ale to get him low. But Ale knows that a potential dive is coming, so he commits heavily. And then critically, this stun doesn't connect. I think the stun connects. It might just kill him there and then. Yeah. End up missing out. And then we see this extended play. Tarzan shows up. And Shanji makes the best call to go for the all-in. You're never escaping. That shield comes in. And we're talking about the, the crit chance, lady. right? It's not even just a crit then. If you'd got a crit earlier, the Slightly, health yeah. differential. Maybe, maybe like 10 health, 15 health or something like that. There's the bone Wasn't plating much. in there. It's again, it's 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 literal millimeters between these two teams. It's And that's the biggest difference when we come to pro play is that when it comes down to these skirmishes... One team crits and the other doesn't... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it comes down to RNG. League of Legends is an RNG-based game and always will be. But yeah, well. no, but like it, it is down to those little small, minute details that do end up being a difference between does the stun land? They do get it. Okay, then they probably get the kill on Camille. They probably get the Camille uh, effigy over onto the Aki. Yeah, he gets out. Again, it's a domino effect. Shanji that comes just out. needs to right click harder, is yeah. uh, what I would say. Well, <laughs> you know, it's been a decent start so far for LNG, but ultimately, not too much has come to fruition, right, from this Lee Sin's Karma. And it's not like at level 6 they suddenly just stop existing. Lee Sin, ult, big spike, for sure. Mm -hmm. But that's where Aki and Cream come online. Cream feeling far more confident now with this ult in pocket. And Aki as well, trying to get that level 6 so you can have that more agency. Now, Easy. critically, Shanji level 6. That big wave crashed, and now all it might potentially be in trouble. Yeah, he's gonna look to try and get his level six himself before any of this goes off. He still has the hook shot, well shot should he need it, but it's actually Aki who's not quite able to get the damage down. They jump onto Ala, but here comes Tarzan. He actually jumps straight into the loving hands of Cream, who gets himself a kill, and there's the Undying Rage forcing the flash from Doombi. LNG just a little bit too slow to get themselves reacting to it, and they end up losing their top and that's laner. such a disaster for Ala there, because look at the CS difference, right? That big wave was supposed to be his referee, where he picked it up, managed to equalize from that wave that Shanji could catch before. Because of the dive, that's not able to happen. You know, it's not like they lost more than just a top laner, but the goal difference as a result means Shanji's in a, a pretty comfortable position in this matchup. Now, we did see the Camille TP mid to get some farm there. Remember, he's not six. Tarzan does have his ultimate, but won't find him. Yeah, Aki just sidestepping the Sonic Wave there. You can see what Aki wanted to do. He wanted to soak up the experience from that wave, get himself to that Heartbreaker so that it's becoming a much harder dive for the side of LNG, but not able to do it eventually. Ale will get himself his level six into that mid lane as he picks up the rest of that farm. But again, big discrepancy in that top side and important as well for OMG. Cream got the kill, so Cream's going to be able to get up to that Everfrost. That thick potential with his Ari is going to be significant the later we go into the game. Yeah, 100%. And Cream had a fantastic game too on this Ari, right? That's why they prioritized it so heavily here. Uh, we saw Cold, obviously, the one who got MVP, but I think Cream was definitely uh, the second for that one. And if he can start to get unlocked on the map, start to have that agency, that's where we can see things go in their favor. Him being there to pick up the kill on Ale was the difference maker. That was the thing that really managed to secure that play. Now, teams are even in gold. Dragon's up, Herald's up. There is a lot on the map to play for right now. And although we saw a lot of trading bot lane, it's been quite kind of quiet otherwise. Yep, again, very different to what we saw in game one and two, where the very heavy focus from both sides was to either get able, uh, able ahead or to get light ahead. Both these AD carries have been relatively quiet. It is light who's coming up slightly ahead. He will be about 10 or so CS once this wave crashes, and you do get the Ezreal picking it all up. But 
Again, OMG not going to be too dissatisfied with the way they're going. I don't think LNG will be either. It's a pretty damn even state of game right now. No one taking the Herald or the Dragon as of yet. Both junglers are on this top side as Aki maybe looks to try and make something happen in the top lane rather than around the Rift Herald. Yeah, they can try and find Arla before this play. Makes it a lot easier, right? To get the numbers advantage. But critically, he'll let his top lane and push the wave in. And then with the confidence, they have the strength. Ooh. The down here. Abel's found light. He's found light. He's going to pop down the exhaust and the flash as well. He's feeling confident and he gets the trade back. This is why Abel likes this matchup. He feels confident in a 1v1 setup where he knows he's in a straight up 1v1. He can take away those fights. He's got the exhaust. Speaking of in a fight, we're going to see the dredge line come out. That's going to be the no spirit rush there available for Cream. He does not respect the CC coming out. And that point and click ultimate is just too good. But while that was all happening, OMG sneak away the Herald. Yes, let's dissect this, right? Shanji had top prior so they can stop the Herald. And when we saw mid, my kind of looked weird, but both supports were trying to get XP for six. Critically, I wanted to hit six first, and he instantly took that window to engage on a Cream. And this is why the Nautilus pick is so good here, because it has that layer CC that you can apply to something like an Ari. Don't give a chance for Cream to react, and they find that kill. But OMG get the Herald. I think that's definitely what they want. And a lot of opportunity. They can use a bot lane. They can try and get Able ahead. Mid is a good one to try and open up the map. Top, I actually don't like it, Top. I actually prefer them just to keep threatening Arla and diving him. I think Herald might be a bit unnecessary here. Well, it's got a little bit extra resistance now as that dragon does go over. They are going to drop the Herald. This is just full tower here. And I think, like you said, it isn't going to be the most optimal use of this particular buff. But it does give them the tower. It does open up the map a little bit. You could maybe drop down your bot lane. As I say, that Tarzan. Be in a little bit of trouble here does take off a little bit of his damage, but at the end of it all, it is still the tower going over in favor, and that is going to be about a 1,300 gold lead, a, a, a little bit more for Shanji, and this is where the game gets a little bit more dangerous. You talked about how the, when this Trindamere gets ahead, he just raffle stomps on you. Yeah, what often happens is the Trindamere is going to push in deep. He's hard to punish because he's so mobile and his ult makes it so you can't kill him easily. They get a second tower. If they get a second tower, then it's definitely a good play, right, is all I'm going to say. I mean, how can you fight this as you're... If you're the Camille right now, I don't think you can really do much about it as Aki is over to the side. He's going to wait to see if he can commit the Hextech ultimatum. But while that's all happening, Doonby finally joining in. They're finally reacting to it. That tower is very, very low. They won't get it just yet. But again, a small macro play from OMG where they prioritize it. They should be able to take it. And, you know, we saw game one. Uh, we saw heavy prior from OMG on getting an advantage top. It didn't really pay off that much here. It's pretty substantial for Shanji, right? And I know I said I wasn't a, a super big fan of when the lane is already going so favorably of extending it right into a position where Ale can potentially farm safely near the tower. They weren't quite able to get that second one, but they still put the Trinity in a position where he's over a thousand gold ahead. They start to find situations where he can push in the lane, rotate towards mid, look for dives, look for flanks. That's really where this comes to fruition uh, and they are enabled by this pick. But for the time being, you know, they can be satisfied with that, but the mid tower is still pretty healthy and that's always a big one to take down. Yeah, absolutely. And we can see there, both the Dragon and the Rift Herald roughly on the same timer, so we can see teams either prioritizing one or the other. If you feel like LNG don't really feel like they can go for the fight, they'll end up you know, moving back towards the other objective, which OMG are not set up for, and vice versa. We now see Cole just getting some deep vision down. Aki has been spotted out on the Scryer's Bloom, but we have a quick look at the items. You will have the Moonstone Renewer finished up for Doombi. Incredibly cheap support item. Not really surprising to see him being miles ahead of everybody else, but now Allah is in a very extended lane. And this is the big fight we're talking about. Like, you have to be so careful. The ghost has been used. We might actually see the flash coming out here from Allah. And he's just going to get run down. Hextech ultimatum flash over the wall. Does he have the blast cone? He does not. And you talked about that long extended lane, and they did not respect it on the side of LNG. Yeah, I mean, I feel like in this situation, right, you wait for Shanji to push in. You catch the wave on the tower. You know, there's the threat of the team collapsing that forces them not to go too aggressive. Allah just pushes the lane up. And it's like, you're so overextended. And then critically, he is in a straight line. Go over the wall, right? I really don't understand it. And honestly, Ola has had a rough series so far, rough right? Rough split. Yeah, yeah honestly. I mean, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, we can give people very realistic expectations for this guy. I think Ola had a great year last year, but so far in 2022, he has not been exceptionally great. He has not been able to be the, the carry performer that we probably expected him to be. It has been a bit middling for him in so far this split. And I think Shanji getting his Trindamir, getting counterpick and knowing exactly what he's going into, the priority we've seen OMG put in towards this top side, I he could do it again and again. He still again. has the ultimate. He can still do this, but he knows that it's just not quite worth it yet as he hasn't gone back and spent.
Yeah, I think as well a critical oh, might look for some. Yeah, I think the critical thing is when you have Ghost, you just know you can run them down, right? Uh, there is a lot of mobility. Twelve hundred. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you look between the top of the screen, two thousand gold lead between top laners. That is insane. Yeah, it really, really is. And you're going to see him go back, pick up his, what I almost certainly think is going to be the Gale Force. Yep, there it is. He can start now moving towards either the Navori Quick Blade or anything, really, he decides how he thinks he needs in this particular fight. So lots of uh, uh, opportunity here for Shanji. And with a minute till Dragon and a minute 20 until Rift Herald, this is an incredibly scary Trindomir that is going to give you priority wherever the hell you want to put it. And I feel like this is a bit of a lull point for LNG, right, compositionally, because Light is not really doing that much damage, right? The, the one item Kraken Slayer, isn't as good as the one item Pride Force for the Ezreal. Two items as well when there's a man immune is going to be more favorable. Ari is in a pretty comfortable spot, right? Has the uh, Everfrost, the picks. Like, I think OMG are very comfortable right now, and LNG, they want a bit more time. They want three items in the Jinx. They want Arla to sort of make up a bit of this deficit in the top lane. Uh, but we will see how it pans out. And the critical thing is keeping Light alive. Even though, obviously, I said he's not the most instrumental at the moment. Jinx getting reset at any point in the game will make a big difference. And how do you want to approach these fights then as LNG? Where do you, yes, you're on a little bit of a lull. Do you just give up the big objectives kind of wait? Or do you want to try and maybe, you, you know, trade back the dragon? dragon. Like, I was going to say, it's a cloud. I don't think you want it, but they're, they're but posturing. It doesn't even matter. It's a cloud. It doesn't matter what dragon it is. You've already got the first one, right? That puts so much less emphasis. And even if they, you didn't have the first one, you don't need to fight this. But they are moving over there. We'll see if they can find a good approach on this. Remember, Ola has TP and Shanji doesn't. Yeah, we're going to see them now go for it. The tower gets taken, as does the Dragon. We are seeing a little bit of a change. There goes the knockback as they do get themselves knocked into it. There's the kick back as Cold. No, not quite getting taken out. It's like Wandi needs to try and flash away to keep himself alive. Does not launch the dredge line. Here comes the TP. It's going to be a 5v3 in this bot side. Aki says, I'm sorry, Abel. There's just not a lot I can do for you here. But look at the base. Look at the top left of your corner. That's going to be Shanji breaking up the base. Yes, you get a kill. But this is just a split push Trindomir. Yeah, he's just going to keep pressuring. And that's the thing. They lost that tier two. They they wanted to commit the TP. They had that advantage of being able to group with their top lane. They get a dragon, they only get one extra kill and lose in the inhib tower. That's two towers. It's scary, right? And I mean, there's an answer back. I think overall, it's not a massive disaster. But I mean, you're going to lose mid as well. Honestly, I think you overcommitted a little bit. For sure. It, do, it does feel like, yes, you get something off of I it, mean, but you, you gain so much more for OMG. You burn the TP for the kill. You only have the dragon, right? Yeah, and yeah you're right. Did, did you act, losing mid tier one, losing two towers top. Base is open. Yeah, it's rough. It's scary. I think this is a critical thing. That is the major thing is how scary it is it. And this feels like a fight from OMG where, you know, I feel like they could definitely get out if they wanted to, but they kind of want to be in this TP. They want to commit. And just notice the difference in how they're playing as soon as the TP starts channeling. Everyone's like, okay, we leave in. Job's done. Cream and wasn't a part of it. And then immediately said, okay, I've arrived. I've yeah. said hello. I must leave now. Start against some gates. Kind of hilarious that Aki, like, flashes out <laughs> and leaves <laughs> able to escape. But not much you can do. Yeah. Oh, Haymaker does end up landing as the dredge line comes in. They are going to land a bit of damage. And the Super Mega Death Rocket is good. So they are picking on Cold a little bit now without his flash available to him. And you mentioned this as well. He's a very squishy support, especially considering he took Glacial Augment and not the Aftershock. It is going to be starting up the, the Rift Herald here for the side of LNG. And... The kills will matter. Whoever gets them is going to matter as well. You're looking at a kill for Lee Sin, a kill for the Jinx, even a kill for the Nautilus. This is going to be significant the longer the game goes on and those items start to get completed. Yeah, and, you know, I feel like LNG just want to keep grouping, right? That's the ideal situation for them. Get max value out of the Karma, find isolated members of OMG and just charge towards them. Uh, but there's this problem of this Trinity. And now he's gone to a new lane. He's taking all the towers top. He's now looking towards bot lane. That's just so much standing gold he's able to pick up. And they're already 2,000 gold up. I like it's a bit of a lone time top, but won't be able to take the tower. And Trinomir is going to take that T1 on the boss side, so... Who can answer him? Yeah, I mean, no one at the moment. If you if you want to answer this Trinomir, you have to send multiple members off to a side lane, off to wherever he is, which means you are putting the rest of your team at a disadvantage. The only real reason we saw... Levels up. Yeah, I was going to say, the level difference and everything, it's just so significantly harder. Even in a 2v1, he could probably end up winning because, well, it's, it's unless you bring the Nautilus, who's going to lock him down? Yeah, and that's the problem. It, it doesn't even matter whether you kill him or not, right? It's is whether you can catch him, because he doesn't have to commit to the fight, he can just back off. And then the rest of the team can start to take camps on the inside, take objectives. It's this constant pressure where you feel like you get pulled over there. And I do think Shanji's done a pretty good job where, you know, team are resetting, he resets with them, doesn't overstay, doesn't allow them to capitalize. But now with the Navori quick blades, this is when he's super scary because you have the extra cooldown reduction on the E when you're getting crits, which you're going to get because you're Trinomir. 
uh, and it means your just chase potential is insane. Like, he can join fights as well and be a relevant threat. If he gets on the back line and finds a flank, I would not want to be playing Jinx into that. That is a 35 CS difference in that top lane. That is absurdly huge right now. Level 13 to only the level 12, and they own the bottom side of the map as Ale tries to go in there onto Shanji there. I'm trying to take away this red. We saw this before. Abel does end up securing that one there. So nice buff transfer there over to the side of OMG's AD carry. But LNG, you can see they're trying to just keep this tug of war going in their favor. They know they have to keep vision. Look at the line of vision they picked up there because they said, look, if anyone sneaks in, we could get caught. Yeah, flanks are the pivotal thing. If you think about how LNG want to play fights, they want it to be a front to back. They want to pick off single targets, things like the Nautilus Assault with the Camille Lult, and they just want light free hitting, getting that grouped up value from the shield. OMG love a bit more of a scattered fight, Old. right? Yeah. He gets caught up with the Sonic Wave, but it's nothing still gonna get nothing, nothing else to it. But 40 seconds till the dragon spawns. Look at Shanji. And Shanji's roaming over, but this is why he's gonna kind of get himself a sweeper. He knows he's in a little bit of trouble if he gets caught out. And, and that's why he, the vision, yeah, right? Exactly. Exposing the threat. And the thing is, you see teams who do a really good job of just setting up their, their sort of top laners, their dive threats on these flanks. They don't even feel comfortable approaching, right? This I mean, dragon area, because they know the Trinity is in the vicinity, Baron is spawning up soon, right? So they are kind of trying to, like, they're not going to do Baron, but they want to at least get control of the area and pose a threat. But I feel like OMG should just be able to grab this dragon. And in fairness, LMG, they have two in the pocket. It's not the end of the world if they end up losing this, but it feels very difficult to contest right now. Yep, and again, I think Tarzan with that Rift Herald is going to try and maybe get two towers in this top side. It would be a very good trade up here for the side of LNG, get some of that standing gold. They are still only about 2,000 gold behind. So again, nothing massively significant. It is just the Trindamir that is the biggest issue right now, who is starting to solo out that dragon. And this is what you get with the power and, pre and presence you have with this top lane pick. When he's able to just give himself free time, you can't really contest it. And the means it gives OMG the, the priority to then, as you say, get people up to this top side so they don't lose a second tier two. Yeah, able to respond. And, you know, LNG, I think they made the right call. They don't lose out, really, from that dragon. Uh, and they're able to defend. But it's one of those situations where, it, you know, it's it's feeling a bit precarious, I think is the way I would describe this game right now. It feels like one big mistake could blow open and out. Oh, they commit. TP coming in. This is going to be a 5v4 as of the moment. The Trinomir is trying to run back as quick as he possibly can. They overcommit on the side of LNG, and now the Trinomir is here. He's going to try and fully commit to this. There's the Hexac Ultimatum going down on top of him. He does have his ultimate there. to some good splash damage, though, from the Karma. As Tarzan gets him out, Shanji gets out with literally sub HP as he tries to run away. OMG wanted the fight, they wanted to try and punish the side of LNG, but they themselves are getting punished. The charm was a million miles wide, they tried to look for it, but honestly, that could be Baron. Yeah, they have the shielding, so they can do a Baron and stay quite healthy as a result, so they should just commit to it and look for the team potential onto OMG. We'll start this up. Aki does have flash, does have ult, does have smite, so he's in a position to potentially steal. Yeah, they could look for it oh here. When you charm over the wall, they start running around. Yeah. <laughs> they start running around as so they get a little bit away from the wall. There's going to be a bit more damage onto I1. D. Look at the flashes available for light. There is none for do and B as the Baron goes down to about 2,000 HP. It's going to be a smite fight. We're going to flip it here as it goes straight in. It's going to be stolen! OMG, get him in. Aki gets himself out, but only just to die as Ali gets himself over the wall. Cream gets hit by the lethal tempo of Light and he starts running down these health bars. Shanji did not have his undying rage. You get the Baron, but you lose three off of it. It's a denial. And now LNG firmly in control of this mid lane and they're firmly in control of the game. Yeah, the fact that they get the three kills, right? Deny all those Barons. They got to feel happy with that one. I feel like you, you can only imagine if Aki didn't get that smite, how much of an absolute disaster that would have been for OMG. Clutch play managed to keep their hopes alive, but still, LNG. They end up flipping it. At the end of the day, can't call it any other way. Uh, Lee Sin does have a general advantage in securing these future objectives because you can time uh, the Sonic Wave with the smite, but he actually doesn't manage early. to do it here. Yeah. It's way early, 93 HP. And so we end up seeing though, despite the fact they get that, the chase potential from LNG allows them to clean up these kills. And so the Baron isn't really too much of a reward for OMG. It's more of a denial. Uh, you'll absolutely take the fact that you get the gold, but gold is even right now. Uh, and when we look towards LNG, Light is really strong, and that's the scary thing. And we gotta think back to that previous fight around the dragon, why it went so wrong. It was reminiscent of the start, the early fights in game two, where it was kind of staggered, it wasn't coordinated. Shanji would be coming on the flank, but either too late or here it was too early. I think as LNG were just grouping up as a death ball, and their comp is so much easier to play. You all stand next to each other, karma presses R, karma presses E, job's done. And yeah. you just have Jinx auto attack. 
And especially now with Chemtech Putrefire, even more threatening. Yeah, you get that shield on top of everybody. Everyone picks up the Grievous Wounds. It means that Strindamir is not going to be as annoying of a health bar coming back every single time. And that's going to be the significant thing coming into these fights. You now have a Phantom Dancer picked up here for Light. So he's got that little bit of extra movement speed. Of course, he's got the movement through the minions as well. So he's not going to be blocked by them. So extra little bits that can maybe work out in favor of him. And I will say, Shanji is still very significantly ahead. But if LNG continue this up, not going into the side nades, not giving him the time of day, and then forcing OMG into odd number skirmishes where they have the advantages, it doesn't matter how big the Trindamir is. Yeah, and what I will say, in terms of scaling, LNG feel real comfortable. They have a Jinx. Pretty solid. They have shielding for the Jinx. Uh, and, you know, things like Camille as well, with those benefits, feel really comfortable. I, I think LNG are very strong in these team fights going on. Mikhail's just come out with Dominion B as well. So much healing and shielding power. And also, if there is a charm that comes in, able to prevent it to stun from Aki as well. Right now, gold is dead even, but OMG, the pressure is on them, right? The, the lead for the Trinomir has started to get smaller. Even if it's still mathematically the same, it's, as a percentage, not going to be as relevant as it was earlier. And it feels like they're struggling to approach these team fights with Dragon. 45 seconds, I'm watching Shanji. I'm watching his approach in the flank. And for LNG, group up. Have the Jinx free hit. That's the goal. Here we go. So this is the important thing to recognize. Light does not have his flash. You do have a Mikhail's Blessing and even a Ranjuin's Omen here for Iwandi. So there's a lot of damage mitigation, a lot of ways of keeping Light safe in these fights. He does have a red buff, and you can see with that extra 500 HP shield he gets every few seconds, it's going to be very difficult for the side of OMG to take him down. Now, with the pressure they have in mid. Shanji backs away from bot. They're gonna honestly have to give this one up. I don't think they're gonna be in the correct position. But as I say that, I forgot there was still 10 seconds for that dragon. So they still have time to make this one work. Cole goes over, they land the hook there. That's on the perfect target. It's gonna be the heartbreaker out. As we can see the true shot barrage coming over. They land the Everfrost. Cole goes down. The cleanse is gonna be good there. The Mikhails was perfect to keep light alive. Keep light free hitting with this red buff. With all the damage in the world, Light picks himself up a kill, and it looks like OMG have lost themselves a bit of gas. They don't really have a way into these fights. Yeah, expertly played by LNG. They kite backwards to peel for the Jinx. They don't let either Cream or Shanji get behind and apply the flank pressure. And as a result, Light has a clear path to just keep moving away, able to turn things around and just very well played from LNG. And the thing is, if they can continue to do this, uh, it's really on OMG. OMG have to play better than LNG to find favor in these fights. And they are struggling right now. Third Dragon secured for LNG. And we're gonna replay off that fight, so. Initially, we see a lot of damage just laid down on the cold, right? Which is obviously a positive. We even managed to get the kill on the back end. But I want you to watch Light. So first, Cream comes in to try and apply that pressure. Charm goes wide, and Light starts kiting towards here, where they have the control ward and the brush, very hard to threaten. And then we see Shanti, and the problem is he's trying to dive into the team. You have things like the Nautilus disrupting, and by the time he even reaches light, he gets one auto win, and his ult runs out. Yep, and that's a three item Jinx now coming in with the Infinity Edge after the Kraken Slayer and the Phantom Dancer. This composition, like you mentioned, is for LNG. Protect Light has been from game one, game two, and now in game three. They have got other threats with Allah on the Camille, but it is all about this Jinx with the lethal tempo. It is just that. It is lethal for the side of OMG. And honestly, I gotta call out Cream a little bit. You need your charms to hit. You need to be burning the cooldowns. You need to be getting the Mikhail's blessing, the flashes, the heals out before the initial fight actually happens before the actual full setup becomes and that's going to be a very difficult thing especially if you're not landing those CC's yeah and that's the problem like you look at Mikhail's it's coming up soon right it's hard to burn and then go into a fight so even if you land the charm that's not often gonna be enough I just feel like oh, you're in a rough spot and this is it uh, there's no next game. There's, like, yes, there's a series tomorrow, but if you lose this, that series means nothing for you. Only does it mean something for RNG, and they are arguably an even harder opponent than LNG right now. We see Tarzan will just move down towards bot, and they might look for a collapse here. Oh, this is perfect. He baited it in the Fog of War. Absolutely uh, fantastic from OMG. They set this up from so long, but can they get themselves out? They got one more charm in the Spirit Rush. I got to give props. That was a yep. very well-played move. Yeah, the TP from Cream means he's comfortable to go down there. And Shanti looked like he was out of position, but they managed to turn it around. It's something, right? It's not It's not going to mean that much right now for OMG. There's nothing it can really translate into. The creativity will reward them for the time being. And it means they have a bit of pressure on the map while Tarzan is unavailable. For 20 seconds, it's not a ton of time. It's not a ton of time. We see OMG now. Actually, I'll say that. They've got a bit of time without there being a jungler here. And they're just going to use that to get themselves some 
Good assemblance. They have got some pretty decent Baron take, I've got to admit. And that's going to mean they're going to start it up here. This is Shanji and Aki just setting this up. Cream on the outside here, trying to make sure that Ala can't get in. He's already down below half HP. Cold on the flank could come in with the showstopper to set it all up. 4,000 HP, 3,000, 2,000. Here goes the fight as Iwandi tries to jump onto Cream. He will sacrifice his life for the greater good as the Heartbreaker to spin to win and the Arcane shift. But Ala is not done with this fight. He gets himself over the wall and trying to make this one work. You gain the Baron again, but you lose two members. You might even lose a third, but Cold trying to run away with that dead man's plate should be able to keep himself just about alive. You get away with daylight robbery. Yeah, well, it was much better than last time. Last time March they got the Baron, better. they lost three uh, and a tower. This time they got Baron, they lose two and a tower, so. <laughs> We take our wins. It means the game. They're improving. They are improving. Improvement is just the little victories. You yeah. Know? So but it denies it off the field again from the side of LNG. 100%. And that's big, but I'm still concerned, right? You look at the scoreline 4 0 6 on this Jinx, 5 2 and 3 on this Camille. This Camille had such a rough early game, now really Eagle flourishing. On, uh, on items, yeah. Yeah, and, and that's what is so scary. Now, OMG, Cream just out of position, and that's the thing on the RE, is you feel so confident with the ult. Uh, it actually wasn't available there, but would have even had a chance to use it, right? The ability not coming in. And then here we see Abel again. Limited out player potential against the Camille. That's why it's so effective in the OMG's comp. But despite the Baron, which is nice, we're not really seeing too much use come out of it so far for OMG. You can see the top right, they're down on gold overall for it. Gold is even, and we have one minute until that dragon. And being an ocean soul, it's already kind of the situation where if you don't kill a target on Lenji, they're going to get healed, they're going to get healed. It's going to be even more extreme. If you can't take someone down, they will just live to fight and fight and fight, sustain up, and it is going to be so painful. I feel like this is the moment for OMG. You have the Baron, you've got yourself ways of pushing back the wave so LNG can't get the favorable setup. They've all gone back, they've all picked up literally half items. You have the Glacial Shroud and you have the War Caulfield's Warhammers. Here's Cold on the back side of this. Didn't get to use his flank last time as Ala goes in. Use the Hexagon to make a very, very early showstopper in. They will get down Cold, but look at Shanji on the back side as Light tries to get everything done. They can't catch the Jinx. They will trade this one back. As I say that, he goes golden, eventually getting taken down. But the Trindamir is no longer here and the resets are coming in. Cream trying to see if he can land a charm last of the one last person. Not quite able. Look at a a Ale trying to shield. Jump in. The shield is huge. Light finally goes down. It's all on Abel. He finally gets it, but it's a four for five. And that means Dragon Soul for LNG. OMG, that wasn't what you needed. So much committed for those kills, but Cream doesn't find the charm again at the critical moment. Doesn't connect. They're able to survive for long enough. Kite under the tower. And as much as the Jinx goes down, the Dragon is secured. The engage comes in, and honestly, it feels like Arlo wanted the RE, didn't find it, goes for the set, not the greatest target. He buys time, turns it around with W, and then Shanji just dives onto life. The stopwatch is instrumental in buying time. Able to flash out, able to get shielding in and buy more time, and then it's this critical moment. Cream doesn't connect the charm. If that hits either target, I feel like you kill them quick right, enough, Aki has to try and go for the execute, but the shield denies it, and then he dies before he can even use his passive. It was down to these minute little things, but LNG win, and now they get the Ocean Soul, and then these long extended fights, that will pay off so heavily. You saw just how much shielding that Karma can do right now. That's a Karma that has built one AP item, technically one and a half if you got the moon somewhere newer. But healing shield power, healing baby. Healing shield power is disgusting, and he's got full tank after that. He's got himself a frozen heart to try and just mitigate some of Shanji's, you know, basically auto attacks on top of this Jinx. So it's a very utility based build here for Karma in the mid lane. Gold is dead, even, but more importantly, LNG have the soul. And as we saw in game two, the soul was the big difference maker between these two teams. Yeah, and, and the thing is here is that, like, Often I say Ocean Soul's good on teams where it's hard to kill targets. Tank your targets is good because they last long enough to get the value out of it. If you're getting blown up, it's not really great. Here, everyone is essentially a tanky target because you have that shielding coming in, but also you have GA on both your critical carries here, right? Death Dance as well on Arla. No one is dying quickly. And that's the problem OMG have been having. They're trying to get resets on the Viego. They're just not coming through.
Okay, we got stopwatches coming in here for OMG. They're trying to toy with the idea. They need to make a decision soon. There we go. There's a the showstopper in. They're trying to jump onto this Jinx. Here comes the TPs. They're trying to just take out Light. And Tarzan's keeping it as a four-man Everfrost. And they make this one work. Doing be not quite going down just yet. They've got the unstoppable, the undying rage. But look at that shielding. It's ridiculous. The GA buys even more time. Is able. Has to run away. They can't quite take down the Camille. They finally will. There's the resets coming out. But they're not quite able to get it. And now Light can run havoc on this backside with the lethal tempo, with the shielding and the healing that he possibly needs. There's nowhere for you to go, and LNG are running out of options. And there was obviously a difference maker, right? We saw Dorinby and Light survive on such little HP, enough to turn around. Oh, Tarzan, he's found. Cream, yep. Cream should just go down here. He's gonna land the Q, which means there's no way of stopping out what is going to happen. That is a full five kills going over the side of LNG. And now Cole, he's gotta do something. He's gotta deny the minions or something. Nice haymaker, but I think he loses his life because wait, of it. He wait. was stationary for a second. And that's gonna mean he goes down. They will get the kill over. Another ace going over the side of LNG. They are now firmly in control of this game. They've even broken open the base. Yeah, I mean, they weren't really gonna end there, I feel, but. Either way, Cole tries to play it safe, tries to stop it, but now gold lead for LNG 2000 and they have that soul in pocket. Dragon spawning in about 20 seconds, and critically, Cold's gonna be dead for this. Uh, I just wanna know, Cold and Cream yep. aren't gonna be up when the Baron spawns. I can see this big engage come in, but I really wanna highlight this fight on the right side and just how close it ends up being, right? We see Light gets caught by the root, and uh, Shanji just flies in. Look how low Going B ends up getting. Literally, the Ocean oh, Soul is a difference maker. And then Light. The auto attack yeah, and he just couldn't find it. He committed on the Light. Going B survives thanks to the Ocean Soul. Light is able to heal up, and he went so low to Shanji, and now he's back up to half HP. Constantly healing, constantly getting shielded. You have to kill them, right? Yep. I know that sounds like the standard thing in League of Legends, but they have to actually die. And now, LNG in the replay managed to pick up Baron. They are now 3,000 gold up, but the comp feels so strong. Level 17 on Lightning still with the GA. They're marching towards the base of OMG. Light doesn't have flash just yet. We'll have it in about 30 seconds or so. His full build on this Jinx. We can see the shot barrage, well. but like, you can't deal with this right now. Ollie jumps straight onto Cream. He's just oh. getting obliterated. Here we go. Showstopper in. They're trying to make this one work as to get Shanji on the backside. He's doing nothing. He's not losing He's help. doing nothing. That was literally a negative damage to the side of light. This game is over, and unfortunately for uh, LNG or OMG, it is going to be their season as well. The base has been cracked, the minions are pouring in. LNG will stamp themselves into the top four. They may go a little higher, they may go a little lower, but it's neither here nor there. OMG are out of playoffs, FBX are in. And I mean, it was a proper fight in that series. But the last game, it just felt like they didn't find the momentum. Cream had a rough one, and then they just got outscaled. It felt like, yeah. you know, we saw the transition where, like, earlier fights, they were able to find a bit of momentum. Then we got to the later ones, so it's like, okay, this is getting hard. And that final one, trading me out, hitting your AD carry, and the shields Nothing. don't even break. Nothing. Right? Uh, <laughs> your critical mass was hit, and I think... You know, there's, you can definitely draw question marks about the draft, but I think execution was so inconsistent from OMG, mm -hmm. right? Game two, even within the game that they won, it was a bit hit or miss over the series, absolutely so. And it's it's a rough end to the season. Obviously, there's extra pressure from the fact that we're having to play three games in a row. Unfortunate circumstances. But uh, I still think there's positives to be drawn from, the, from this lineup regardless. you know, Very young lineup. Exactly. Ex excluding Cold. You know, we've seen... <laughs> it's been around a while. We've seen <laughs> Shanji have a really strong performance coming in uh, as a rookie. And despite the fact they won't make playoffs, you know, they, they put in a good effort and have a chance to play spoiler tomorrow against RNG. Yeah, absolutely. And again, look, it's commiserations, of course, to OMG. This is a bitter pill to swallow, especially considering you had to play them. Look, it's the way that the dice rolls sometimes. I think if you were given a, an option between forfeiting and playing three games in a row, you're going to play three games in a row yeah, every well, single yeah, time. So, I mean, there's no one in the world who's going to deny that. You'd rather a chance than as a straight-up loss. And they were competitive through and through. They went 2-1 yesterday, or 1-2 against FBX yesterday. They went 1-2 today against LNG. They still got to go up against RNG tomorrow. And again, LNG and JDG, specifically JDG, are going to be very big OMG fans tomorrow. And we've seen it multiple times this split with TT, WE, LGD. Once the pressure is off they just seem to open themselves up and, and kind of just play a lot better so yeah. there is there is i'm not counting omg out of tomorrow series yeah, i mean rng lost to we yeah. rng can lose to anyone <laughs> right at this point i love that it's like this like they could beat anyone it's like no they can lose to anyone but like, uh, their record against like teams on the, on the upper they, end of they playoffs only they only lost to v5 yeah That's i mean they, they beat so many teams oh, no, wait, the they, beat, they beat v5 who they lose to no, they didn't, they didn't 
Did they not beat the FIFA Five? I thought they were the one few one of two teams. No, that Weibo beat. and JDG beat Weibo. FIFA. That's what yeah, I was yeah. thinking of. Yeah, I'm RNG like they lost to FIFA Five. They pretty much beat a bunch of those other top teams, right? Yeah, between like um, seventh and sixth. Yeah, or seventh and third. Yeah, and it, it's just kind of crazy that they do all that, but they can drop games into lower team, which is why it's still up in the air. But LNG. Let's talk about them, right? I, I think it, this wasn't the cleanest series. There's definitely still some question marks. I think Arlo looked rough, I'll be honest, but Light was that consistent carry. And I think critically, the, the team looked like a team. I think yeah. more, and that's the thing we've struggled to see is the coordination. I think particularly Tarzan, 3MB, and Iwandi work together as a three-man unit to try and facilitate particularly their AD carry, because Light, he has shown time and time again that he's an AD carry where if you invest resources, you get back a lot of value. Yeah, you invest in him, he will give you the dividends. He will return a good investment from you, and that's exactly what he's been all split. Honestly, I think Light has been one of the most consistent, if not the consistent, carry or player on this team. I think Iwandi coming in now has finally found his footing. He came back up in the first series a little bit rocky, but of course he was kind of building himself into it, and there was just, some of those hooks felt like they were heat-seeking in those in that game. You know, rather than landing onto Cold, they landed onto Aki or Cream, and you know, hell, even get onto Abel, so he had to burn the arc Arcane shift early to buffer it. It is those little things that I feel like LNG are deservedly a top four team in our league. And yes, it is, you know, unfortunate the way the, the momentum has kind of shift, but it's a it's a marathon, not a sprint. You yeah. have to win all as many games as you possibly can from the start of January right up 